Many of you have asked how to rotoscope using Lockdown, so we'll take a look using this footage. To get started, press Pop Out. Create points by control clicking and dragging. Control clicking to place custom points. That's probably good enough. I'll change to the extremely accurate tracking mode. Here's what the track looks like. So at this point we need the mesh to be everywhere, so we should create some extension points. On Windows, hold Control, Alt, Shift, and Click. On Mac, Command, Alt, Shift, and Click. To make these part of the mesh, it's probably easiest to clear the mesh and auto-triangulate again. Right now these points aren't actually moving or showing up. In order to have them follow along with your living points which have been tracked, you need to use interpolation. So we can turn that on here and we'll use two point interpolation. Now when I play through, these extension points are following the points nearby and taking their motion to guess where the edges of the mesh are. The only ones that don't really look so good are these two, so we'll just delete those. And then clear that mesh right there using alt click and drag to delete the edges and auto triangulate. So we'll see what kind of roto this needs here. And we'll just make a nice quad so that that moves smoothly. So closing this, I think we're done. Then we can press lockdown. And if I go to play this back, you can see that the mesh is following, which is exactly what we want. And now to actually do the cutout, we just have to go into the stabilized pre-comp. So moving into the stabilized pre-comp, I can delete the checkerboard, and you can see what's happening is that this is mostly not moving very much at all, which is going to make Roto extremely easy. The simplest type of Roto, you just create a solid, hide it for the moment, and then draw shapes. So I'll do one shape for the head. It's often easier to Roto using different shapes. I'll do another for the wing. There, the masks have been placed. So for visualization purposes, let's just show these masks in the render. I'm going to go to Effect, Generate, Stroke, set it to All Masks, and have the paint style on Transparent. Maybe I'll make these just a little bit larger so you can see them and change the color to green, which will be easier to see against the background. When I move back into the main comp, you'll notice that the masks are already following very well because the masks have been stabilized to match with the image. And really the only part that looks like it's going to need some manual correction is up here on the neck. So rotoing inside the stabilized pre-comp is pretty easy. Inside the stabilized comp, Let's just shut off that stroke because that's not helping anyone and uh, shut off the visibility of the solid. I can turn on my mask path for each of these. And just roto like we always have. And taking a quick look at the rest of the bird, that's probably all okay. So let's just move through this. Looks pretty good. Might just slide this keyframe over a little. And you can see that with just three keyframes of Roto, we've mostly fixed all the errors. And then I guess there's a little bit going on down here that we could change too. So without fixing this, let's just see what this would look like. I can take this layer and make it not a guide layer because we want it to render. We'll turn on the solid and move back into the main comp. If we take our background layer here, we can set it to alpha mat against the layer above it. And just for example sake, I'll make a background. And you can see the results. Obviously there's some issues we have to fix in there, but that is the general idea of how you can roto using lockdown. So of course the year is 2021 and there are a lot of other tools to roto. So let's just take a look at how we can use some of these with Lockdown. 
Going back into the stabilized pre-comp, you don't actually have to roto at all. You could just take this layer, the one that has lockdown on it and is stabilized, make it not a guide layer, and use the roto brush. Typically, you have to click before it updates the effects beneath it. So I'm not going to do a tutorial on it. However, because this is stabilized, this tool may have a little bit more success than it does otherwise. The point is that the stabilized pre-comp can be used with any of the other tools in After Effects or Resolve. And of course, don't forget, you can attach graphics too. Thanks for watching. For more info, check out aescripts.com slash lockdown.